Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Hey, listen, don't forget, go right now to kcm.org slash notes and get your notes now. I I didn't mention it the last two or three days, but y'all know that by now. Glory to God. And you follow every scripture, every word from the Lord, every, every, all outlined for you. And so you can get a whole lot more out of these broadcasts. We are limited in time, but we're, we're not limited where, where the material is concerned. You can take it and go back over it and and you can go back to, and, and on demand, you can get these broadcast again and that kind of thing. Take advantage of it. Father, we thank you for today. We bless you, sir. We open our eyes. We open our ears. We open our hearts to hear from heaven. Revelation from heaven about Jesus and about heaven and about your word in the earth and the move of God in the earth. We are so excited about it and we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. David, I am, I really never had thought about until yesterday's broadcast about that moment after that horrible car wreck in Marshall, Texas, Halloween night, 1966. And oh, how grateful I was that there was a a truck driver in that hospital and the Lord said to him, I have some, I have some people here that I want you to go pray for tonight. And he got up out of bed. It's about midnight that night. He got up out of bed and found his way. The Lord led him to where they had put us in this room, Gloria and me and John and Kelly. Little John's arm was broken, like I was talking about yesterday. And and Gloria, her head had smashed into the dashboard of that car and she had the flu so bad during the wreck. She was just really sick. And Kelly was a little three-year-old in a state of shock. This man came up there and a man that he had won to the Lord while he was in the hospital and got him baptized in the Holy Ghost. And these two guys are standing here next to me and they got their hands on my shoulders praying in the Spirit for me. He was, I needed that man, David. I didn't know anybody in Marshall, Texas. I'm, I'm just that much above a scriptural illiterate myself. I hadn't been saved but about four years and disobedient to God. I wasn't going to ORU like I was supposed to. I was headed off in another direction. Yeah. And... And, I, and I, the same thing happened to me, happened to Jonah. But God delivered me. Glory to God. But there's a man, I still don't even know who he was. But he had a huge impact oh, on you. Oh, David. Which means he had a huge impact on tens of millions of people across he the world. He has a part of every person that's ever come to the Lord in this ministry. Yeah. I mean, this, David... This is just huge. Well, I, I was telling, we were talking a little earlier, but there was a revelation kind of thing that really got me when I did my grandfather's funeral. Because I do my grandfather's funeral. He's a strong believer. He's a Christian, no doubt where he is. He's with Jesus. And I was going through the thing of to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I know where my granddad is. Now listen to this now. That you got to get to this. But I was thinking about when does he get, because judgment, rewards and punishments are given out. You know, the blessings, well done, good and faithful servant, and, and he's given 10 cities, and he's given, and so you get all the rewards that go with it. And I was thinking, when will the rewards be, be given out? And I know he's there. I know he's there. No, uh, yeah, yeah, so, I see. And, and, and the <laughs> Lord just hit me and said, can't give out rewards yet. He's going to be harvesting fruit for generations yet to come because the impact he had on my life and then that means if I have an impact on somebody else's life, he gets part of the fruit from it. Then if they have an impact on somebody else's life, he's... he's it never ends. It's like royalties on a land. You know, if you, if yeah. you own the mineral rights on that. That's, that's a good 50 generations away, you're still paying, you're still paying the, back here on, on these royalties for all these families. What about, I was thinking about here in the, in the 10th chapter of Acts when God sent Peter down to Cornelius' house. Yeah. He went to a Gentile, mm-hmm. one guy, mm-hmm. but 
He had his whole family in there. Yep. He had all the people that worked for him in his household. Mm -hmm. God didn't send Peter to Cornelius because he was a high-ranking military officer. Mm -hmm. No. He sent Peter to a man that obeyed God. Loved God. He had a heart for and God. And loved the Jews. He loved the Jews. He, and he, he had a heart to give and he obeyed God. Mm -hmm. He did what God said to and hey, his whole family's in there. Who knows where they went? That's right. I'll tell you this, we're a product of that man's life That's right. because the Gentiles got, got in there. because he listened That's to right. God. And if you go back to, to Paul in Acts 9, on his conversion on, on, on the road to Damascus, it's interesting that Paul, th there's no question Paul's still getting fruit today, you know, well, because sure. everything that he's done, he, he's got fruit in your life and my life and every believer's life. So, you know, rewards are piling up in that sense. But what happens with Paul? Paul didn't instantly become what he was. You know, Ananias is, is the first guy that God says, hey, you need to go talk to this guy. He says, wait a minute, God, don't you know who he is? He's it been killing people. It was not one of the apostles. It was not one of the apostles, just a little guy <laughs> that lived over here in, in way and said, go talk to him. And then you read twice in Acts 9 that after Paul comes to Christ, it said, and he was with the believers. They're teaching him. Look, you've had it all wrong. You've been kill, killing people, believing. Let us, and so the first time he was with believers, and the next thing you see, Paul is in the temple arguing the scriptures and the prophecies that Christ is the guy. Now, where did he get that? Because these unnamed believers, whoever they were back here, was teaching Paul. When you look at, when you look at the 13th chapter of Acts, and there were there present prophets and teachers. Yeah. Um, you're in my real good friend, Rick Renner done in-depth study of that. Now we know that we can tell from their names, it points out the fact that there was a, there was a black man there. Mm -hmm. He was in authority. Mm -hmm. there, were, there were other people there from different backgrounds and it points out the fact that they are from a, an array of backgrounds, That's right. but they're all there and they are laying their hands on the prophet and teacher, Paul, and he leaves there an apostle. Mm -hmm. That's right. There was a black man involved in it. Yep. There was a guy that was uh, raised in here <laughs> out of Herod's family. Look, look what God did. That's right. That's right. God has always, people. He's always done this kind That's of right. thing. That's right. And see, this is the thing that we've got to get a better vision of ourselves. We're told in Proverbs 22, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And if we go around, you know, I'm just a nobody, I can't have an impact. You think like that, that's going to be what happens. You've got to get a different vision. Only reason you're a nobody is because you said it. That's right. That's right. Because he's got all sorts, I mean, the scriptures are filled with nameless individuals that turn the course of history and have huge rewards because of what they did in being obedient or in teaching a person like Paul, the, the nameless disciples. And, and that becomes really part of the Great Commission. And this, I am so mm. into this recently yes. because Jesus mm. has got his disciples says, okay, guys, I'm out of here, but here, here's what I'm telling you to do. He says, all power is given me in heaven oh, yeah. and in earth. Yes, sir. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even in the world. Two things have really jumped out admit that verse one is, he said, go make disciples. He didn't say get them converted. He said, go make disciples. And there's a big difference. That's, that's a big thing. There's a big difference between getting converted and becoming a disciple. That's the difference between Jesus being Savior and Jesus being Lord. That's right. Acts 2.36, yeah. he is both Savior and Lord. Yeah. Savior, okay, yeah. I got my fire insurance. I'm going to heaven. Lord is he runs my life yes, and I get sir. the benefits of that. Yes, sir. So right now, Christians and the church are focused on conversion. We're focused on evangelism. Pray the sinner's prayer. Jesus said, I want you making disciples. I want you getting these folks grounded and rooted and I want the roots down. And the, the next thing he said, he says, you teach them to observe all things I have taught you. And I got to looking at that and, and you know, there are 49 <clears throat> commands in the Bible that Jesus delivers to his disciples. 49 things he specifically tells them to do. 
Now, if we as believers took those 49 things and said, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be teaching everybody else because this is what he taught us. And the Great Commission is not about conversion, it's about discipleship. So you need to know these 49 commands of Jesus. Here, here's the, and then I started thinking through other things. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to disciple, if I do this right, if I disciple my neighbor and if I disciple the guy at the end of the street and whatever, you'll turn a whole community around because you, you look at things like, let, let's take Matthew 20. Jesus is teaching on the minimum wage. Now, if I teach people to think right about the minimum wage, that's going to have an economic impact. And, and by the way, Jesus was not for minimum no, wage. No. He was against. No. But then I can take them to Luke 19 and have the teaching on the capital gains tax and how the capital gains tax actually hurts the prosperity of a community. So if I can teach that and make them a disciple of that, then we can have economic prosperity in a way that my community hadn't had it. And then if I go to John 8, 12, I find out Jesus is now talking about what needs to happen in the judicial system and we can get our judicial, we can get our judges changed and reformed because I can teach people what Jesus says about the judicial. And, and so that disciple, that's what every believer is called Absolutely. to do is to disciple those around them. Now make when, disciples of when all you men. Make up, when you make your mind up, you make the decision. I choose to be that. Mm -hmm. I choose to be that kind of a disciple. I'm going to teach others. I'm going to do this because that's what, that's that's right. what the that's Word what says. I'm called to do. to do. This is my call. I'm going to do this. Now, when you do that, that, let's look what he said here in Mark 16. Yeah. He said, you go into all the world. He's talking about that Babylonian world system out there. And you preach the gospel to every creature. Now, that's what Philip did. Mm -hmm. he, it says, and Philip preached Christ. Well, what is the gospel of Christ? Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What's the gospel to the poor? I have broken the curse of poverty. Yeah. And that's what he preached, going right on down the list. Now, Peter went and preached, and he said, uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, mm -hmm. who went about doing good and healing all oh, that were oppressed Christ. of the devil. And when he taught those things, the Holy Ghost fell on Cornelius' house. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost moved and started healing people, just like it, with, with Philip, they, they heard and saw the miracles. Mm -hmm. How do you hear a miracle? Well, you get told about it. That's yeah. how you hear it. Now, so all of that's going on all the same time. Now, when you decide to do that and you go telling people that you know about how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power, and as you do that, he that believes and is baptized be saved. He that doesn't believe to be damned. That's simple enough. Mm -hmm. These signs will follow those that believe. Not just you as you go preach it, but to those you preached it That's to. Right. They'll join you in signs and wonders. In my name, cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink any deadly thing will not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, set on the right hand of God. God, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. That's right. That's every little guy in this whole thing. And see, th this is, in my opinion, this is one of the problems we have with culture today is we have 24-7, 365 national news. We have entertainment. We have 300 cable channels that, that we can watch 24 hours a day. And as a result, the little guy no longer means anything. And this is the way it goes. Um, I, I'm frustrated with what goes on in America. And, and I look and I say, man, I don't like this. But you know what? I really can't get the president tr to, t to treat Israel what different. What can I do about it? I, you know, I really don't like the way the Supreme Court, but I can't, I can't do anything with those nine guys. And, and man, I, I wish the Senate would take up the 287 bills the House passed. That they were, I, I can't make them do it. And so what happens is we get paralyzed or we see the guys that are athletes on TV or, or the stars of music and they're, you know, we put them up on this pedestal and that's what we see and we think that that's normal. And that's not normal. No, what you see no, is not, no. it, what really struck me was in the American Revolution as danger came to America, came to the communities, came to the, 
you, you have first the Battle of Lexington, and the Battle of Lexington is where this whole thing got started. And what you had was Reverend Jonas Clark saw the danger coming. He got 74 guys out of his church who went and met 700 British, and that's the Battle of Lexington. Yeah. Well, later in the afternoon, the British have now moved into the dangers come to Concord. Well, Reverend William Emerson gets 300 guys out of his church, and he goes out to the North Bridge and says, we'll take care of this. And then they go back on the road to Boston. Then they get back. We got the Battle of Bunker Hill. And you got Reverend Williams says, I, I've got two companies in my church. We'll go take care of this. I just heard the Lord say this. There were no insignificant That's soldiers right. in any That's of right. those groups except the one that refused to pull the trigger. That's right. That's right. Wouldn't go. And that was the key to that because back then, nobody went to the commander in chief and says, what do we need to do? They just took care of where they were. They just they said, you know, this is our Started town. Started with one. This is our town. Yeah. And, 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 and you're are, not doing this to us. These are the guys in my church. <laughs> and, we're, and if everybody will take care of their turf, their, their little bean patches, you know, the, the account back in the Old Testament, yeah. David chose his yeah. 30 guys. All this guy did was defend a bean patch. Well, if you'll take care of your bean patch, you'll be a mighty man of God. You'll be one of those mighty men of God that David took and, and put him over all the military. All you got to do is defend your bean patch. And, and so we're, we're into this thing of seeing stars and superstars. Hey, what made us what we were was we saw individuals. And those individuals went out and said, you know, I can help take care we of... We can do this. I, we can, I can take care of the school board over here. I, I can take care of the city council. No no problem with the mayor. I, I'll, I'll take care of... The, man, if you, if you get that... That Mark 16 mentality and that yes. Matthew 28 mentality. Yes, Every disciple goes and does that. We'll turn this thing around. You know, the, 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 the big thing that, that, that Matthew recorded there, and this is just, I mean, well, both of these accounts are just a short time after Jesus raised from the dead. And he, listen how he put this now. He said, all authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Well, that's great. I'm sure glad. Now, wait a minute. He's not done yet. Yeah. Therefore, you go and you take my name. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my authority over heaven and earth. Every one of these guys that believed what he said that day and they went out and they began to tell people how God anointed Jesus and that's what the Holy Ghost and power mm -hmm. and we've been redeemed from the curse. Hey, they had a, just as much authority over the devil to hell right. as Jesus did when he whipped them in hell himself. Well, Jesus says, he says, here's the way you're supposed to pray. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is as in it heaven. As it is in heaven. I already know how it works out up here. You need to take it down here and, and do the same thing down yes, here. Yes, sir. And that's what he told his disciples to pray. It, that is look, so good. Here it is up here. Now you guys make it happen down oh, here. Oh, yes. And, and see, that, that goes back to what we're talking about back in Genesis. The reason God created man was to tend the earth. He didn't need more, more worship because he had all the angels. He says, hey, here it is in heaven. You make it happen on earth the same way. I, I, I know what it's like in heaven because I'm there. You guys are here. Make Start earth the praying, same way. Man. Just as he said, pray it. This is what you need to pray, guys. And <laughs> yeah. That's what he wants. Hey, it's real you, simple. You can you can start praying this right now. Oh God, I, I know what's happening in heaven. I want this in my church. I want what Brother David and Kenneth are talking about the outpouring of the oh Jesus. I want this in my church. I thank you for it being in my church. Okay, you prayed. Now listen. It may not take but you laying hands on one person right. in your church. That broke out over here in my seat that Sunday morning while Terry was standing on a platform. She was receiving the offering. David George hadn't even preached. Terry's receiving the offering. Boom, it hit her. I never heard that girl preach like that in my life. I mean, that tin anointing hit her. And man, she is preaching and the pe people are jumping up and praising God and laying hands on one another and the power of God is all over the place. One, one move of the Spirit. One. 
Just one, one individual hearing. Oh yeah. And, and it, it, it could have been Terry, it could have been anybody. anybody. It could have been a janitor. Anybody. At the back saying, God just told me and I need, all you get, individual. And individual, yeah. and, and that's the thing, we've got to understand that it's not them, it's us. It's us. It's us. We, we're not looking to them to fix it. We're looking to us. And I don't care what you do, what your position in life is, and what you think about yourself. God's already told you what you can do if you will. And, and we got we to gotta get that mentality. Yes, we got to get that mentality. Yes, gotta get that. Gotta get it. You know, that's part of being God inside minded. Um, being raised in this Babylonian system where the whole system's trying to meet its own needs without yeah, God, that's right. then everything you need is out here somewhere. Yeah. Somebody else has got it. Mm -hmm. um, what, even, even somebody that's very, very wealthy, they're still looking to their they wealth are. to do it. But when you got born again, you became an inside out person. All that you ever need is on the inside of you because the glory of God's inside you and the power of faith is on the inside you. Now, here's the big thing. Listen to me now carefully. We still had that idea and too much now to a degree that God, we're at God's on the outside and yeah. we're reaching for Him yeah. instead of becoming God inside minded. It's all in here. We're inside out. It's all in the Word. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And the glory of God is in me. It's in you. Amen. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is it's within, within you now. And He's praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's in you. It's in you. there. Amen. It's in you. Amen. Brother David and I will be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes.